Today I'll be showing you how to install Windows 11 in VirtualBox. So now, this process is not as simple as just downloading an ISO from Microsoft and booting from it in a virtual machine and clicking install, and that's because of Windows 11's system requirements, namely for a TPM and secure boot support. And as you may know, these checks don't play nicely with virtual machines. If you've seen my video about installing Windows 11 in KVM, then you might have seen me set up an emulated TPM on KVM. Unfortunately, that doesn't work in VirtualBox, but the good news is that we actually don't need that functionality because there's actually a much simpler way of getting around these requirements. And that involves going into the registry editor on the Windows 11 installer and adding a few registry entries, which I'll show you how to do. Also, in addition to installing Windows 11, I'll also show you how to get virtual machine drivers installed on your Windows 11 guest after the Windows 11 installation is complete. But without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so if you haven't already installed VirtualBox, you can get it from your package manager on Linux, or alternatively, if you're on Windows or Mac OS, you can get it from virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads, link in the description. So now once you've got VirtualBox installed, the very first step is to install the VirtualBox extension pack. The very first step to doing that is to go to the help menu about VirtualBox and check your version. I'm on 6.1.38 because that's the version from the Ubuntu 22.04 repos. And if you happen to be on the latest version, which is not the case for me, just go to all supported platforms and off you go. Now in my case, you'd have to scroll down to VirtualBox older build and click on that link and then click on the link for your version, in my case 6.1, and then scroll down to your VirtualBox version. Again, I'm on 6.1.38. So I'm going to go get the extension pack for that. And then of course you go download that file. So now I've already downloaded this file. I've got it right here in my downloads folder. So in order to install it, you just double click on it and then you just follow the on-screen prompts. Now in my case, I've already installed it, so I'm not gonna bother. All right, so now the next step is to go get a Windows 11 ISO. To do that, you're gonna go to microsoft.com slash software dash download slash Windows 11. Link in the description. All right, and then it'll show you the options for getting Windows 11. In our case, we're only concerned with the bottom one, which is the Windows 11 ISO. So we're gonna select that, and just click Windows 11, and then I'm gonna select the language. In my case, I'm gonna go with English United States, then click Confirm, and then I want the 64-bit download, which is the only download because this is Windows 11. So I'm going to go grab that and save the file. So now again, I've actually already downloaded this file. I've got it right here in my ISOs directory, Windows 11 22H2, which is the latest at the time of shooting this video. So now we can finally get to creating the VM and actually installing Windows 11. So from the VirtualBox welcome page. We're going to click new and then it'll bring us into the create virtual machine wizard. So first thing we're going to do is choose a name. I'm just going to call it Windows 11 and then select our operating system, in our case Microsoft Windows, and under version Windows 11, 64-bit. And since we called it Windows 11, it actually automatically switched from Windows 7 to 11 for us. But anyway, we're gonna click next. And then for memory size, for Windows 11, you definitely want at least four gigs of RAM. In fact, if you have at least 16 gigs of RAM, I'd recommend even jumping that up to eight gigs of RAM allocated to your VM. Now, a general rule of thumb, never allocate more than half of your host system's RAM to avoid crashing your host system. I got 20 gigs of RAM, so eight gigs of RAM should be fine for this VM. And now this will allow us to create a virtual hard disk for our VM. So we're going to click on create. And if you're not planning to use this with other virtualization software, VirtualBox disk image works fine, or else you could choose one of the other options. But anyway, just click next. And dynamically allocated is fine. And as for the size, for Windows 11, you're going to want at least 64 gigs 
allocated to your VM. So hopefully you've got enough free disk space on your host system for that. But anyway, we're gonna click on create. 80 gigs is fine for my case. But before we power this on, we have to go into the settings first and then go to system. And what I like to do is under the boot order, uncheck floppy. I really only need the hard disk and optical. So move the hard disk to the top of the boot order and move the optical to under that. Just something I like to do. And under extended features, make sure that enable EFI is checked off. And then under processor, you're gonna wanna make sure you have at least two cores allocated to your VM if you have four or more cores on your host system. Again, don't allocate more than half of your host system's cores to your virtual machine to avoid crashing your host system. In my case, I have four cores, so two cores should be fine for this VM. And then we're gonna come to display and then check off enable 3D acceleration and then just jack the video memory all the way up to the max. And the reason why we do this is to give you the smoothest graphical experience possible. Now we're gonna come down to storage and then click on our virtual optical drive labeled with the disk icon. And then next to the optical drive SATA port menu, you're gonna click on that little disk next to it and then click on choose a disk file. And then we're gonna select our Windows 11 ISO and that's pretty much it. So you can click okay to get out of this menu and apply our changes and start the VM. Let's get into full screen mode here. Now on startup, you will have to press enter when it shows up that screen. So that way it'll boot from the Windows 11 ISO. All right, and then here you're gonna select your language. I'm gonna go with English Canada for the time and currency format and then click next. So now this step is important. Before it'll let us actually install Windows 11 in this virtual machine, we have to create a few registry entries to bypass the TPM and secure boot checks. So to do that, we have to get into our registry editor. To do that from here, we just open up a command prompt window by pressing shift F10. If you're on a laptop, you might have to do shift FN F10. But anyway, once we're at the command prompt window, we're just gonna type reg edit. Okay, and now we're in registry editor. So we're gonna go to H key local machine system setup and then right click that key or folder and then go to new key and then call this one lab config exactly like that. And then this is where we're gonna create our registry entries. So to create one, just right click, go to new D word 32 bit value. This one we're gonna call bypass TPM check, exactly like that. And then we're gonna create another one called bypass secure boot check, again, exactly like that. And then we're gonna create a third one called bypass RAM check, again, exactly like that. And then for all of them, we're gonna double click on them and then set their value datas to one for all three of them, like I'm doing. Okay, so now you should have these three registry entries, all of which with a value data of one. If that's the case, you can close out of registry editor and command prompt, and then click install now. All right, and then once we get to activate Windows, since this is a virtual machine, we're just gonna click, I don't have a product key, and then select what edition of Windows you want. I just like to go pro, so I'm gonna do that. And now we have to accept the Microsoft software license terms. Basically, if you're at this point, it's probably just gonna let you install Windows 11. So that means that you did your registry entries right. Now, if you didn't create those registry entries, it would have stopped you right about now and then just told you, this system can't run Windows 11. But anyway, under what type of installation do you want? We're gonna click custom and then it'll show us the virtual drive that we're gonna be installing Windows on. We're just gonna click next and then it'll go install Windows 11. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, so now once we get to the Windows 11 setup screen, we're gonna select our country and our keyboard layout. Let's not add a second keyboard layout. All right, then here we can name our device. I'm gonna call this one virtual box. And then 
hit enter, and then it actually has to reboot to apply the name change. Okay, and then for some reason when Windows 11 reboots after you install it, the virtual machine just stops executing and it boots you back to the VirtualBox VM manager. All you have to do in this case is just start the virtual machine up again. I'm really not sure why it does that. All right, and then we're gonna set up this virtual machine for personal use. And then where it asks us to sign into a Microsoft account, we're gonna click sign in and no, even if you're on Windows 11 Pro, it won't give you the option to sign in with a local account instead, at least not officially. But there is a way to bypass the forced Microsoft account creation. Just type in some fake Microsoft account like a at a.com, then hit next. And then for the password, just punch in some random gibberish, then enter. And then it'll tell you, oops, something went wrong then click next. And now we can set up a local account just by entering our name and then password. Or if you don't wanna set up security questions, you can just leave it blank and then set up the password in settings later or not because after all, this is a virtual machine. Should already be protected by your host systems login. At least I'd hope so. All right, and then at this step of the process, it's just a matter of clicking no for everything and selecting required only under diagnostic data. Pardon me while I do all that. All right, now that we're at the Windows 11 desktop, the very, very last thing we're gonna do in order to get our virtual machine display scaling properly is to install the virtual machine guest drivers on our guest system. So to do that, just come down to the virtual machine menu here and then click on devices and then click insert guest edition CD image. And then it'll ask you if you want to download the VirtualBox guest editions disk image file from the internet, just click download and then it'll go download it. And you're gonna have to click download again. And then once the VirtualBox guest editions disk image has been downloaded, just click insert. And now we can go into our file explorer on our guest system and then navigate to our CD drive and then double click on VBox Windows editions. And then when user account control prompts you, just click yes and then once you're in the setup, just click next, next, install. And then it'll go install the VirtualBox virtual machine drivers in our guest system. So now this will take a little while, so I'll speed this up. Oh, it just installed the virtual machine display driver. And actually I didn't speed up anything because that's actually how long it took. But I mean, now we need to reboot the system to finish installation of VirtualBox guest editions. So we're gonna do that now. All right, and then once you're back at the desktop, you should notice after a few seconds or so that your virtual machine display fills up the screen. If it doesn't, just go into settings, display, and then change the display resolution to your host system's native screen resolution. So in my case, it automatically did that, so no need to do anything for me. And by the way, if it doesn't let you change the resolution, it's probably because you haven't installed the VirtualBox guest editions. But anyway, we are done. And that's how to install Windows 11 in VirtualBox. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.